the fuck just happened? Hey. How is this happening to me? You gonna be alright? How did Trish find those dumb pictures? Look, don't listen to those pricks, Adam. I was reading on it. All of them are dumbasses. It couldn't be. Nobody came from something like this. Like, th this will all blow over. What would Trish gain from something like this? Like, none of them talk about our shitty concert. I know she doesn't like me, but this. And that was like a fucking month ago. This is fucked up. I'm going to rip her stupid horns off and give her a couple new holes to breathe with. It'll be good, Anon. I think Trisha's dad had a thing going on with one of the golf clubs. See if you can give me a couple. Oh, thanks. See, think Fang's dad has a thing going on with the golf clubs. Think, see if you can give me a couple of pointers. <laughs> Shit! Just need some time for to forget it happened. The squeak of sneakers catches my attention as I turn to see Reed approaching us down the hall. Reed, I thought Spear sent everyone back to class. I can't just sit in class while my hombres are going through some heavy stuff, you know. Got something I need to get off my chest anyway. What? Busy dealing with getting doxxed here? Wait. Wait. Get what off your chest? What? Were you in on it? Fang's questioning glare makes Reed shudder. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Don't get the idea. Wrong idea, man. Reed? How did all this happen? No, it, it, more like, uh... I was getting the projector set up earlier, right? Something was wrong with the lens, and I didn't have enough time. So I asked her to get the thing from Naomi, and I guess she must have, like, changed the slides before giving it to me. And you didn't think to check. Reed deflates. Damn it. Damn it, Reed. Look, man, Trish isn't a bad person. Bitch has a funny way of showing it. Dude, I know you're still hurting from what she did, but, like, yeah, what could have possibly given that away? Bro, let me finish. Reed's raised voice takes the wind out of my lungs. That's the first time I think I've ever heard him raise his voice. Trish messed up pretty bad, bro. Like, massively, hugely messed up. Not gonna argue with that. She abused my trust, do true dude. When she gave me the presentation for, for, from Naomi, I didn't think she'd do anything like that. But have you ever considered why? Because she's a two-bit cunt. Reed sighs again, with a noticeable lack of smoke surrounding him. Dude, you and Trish have always been at each other's throats. But, like, why even? I open my mouth to answer, but can't find the words. Or the reason? You ever just stop to consider why Trish always gave you a hard time? Not really. Another side, this side with the expectant look from Reed. Did you ever try, bro? No. And that's the problem, dude. Reed has a pain expression on his face, and a quick glance shows Fang's even worse. Like, I know this sucks. Trish tricked me too, and all, you know? That just hurts you. Maybe try to think on oh, why Trish did this, alright, bro? Like, Trish and Fang were like big, big, big. And I think Trish wants to have. Is, is feeling like she's losing a friend or something, I guess. <sighs> Trish can bro, still burn in hell for all I care. Three months! Three months from graduation, and you pull a stunt like this. Spear's stern voice, grilling Trish through. Trish, in his office, rips me from my thoughts. Good, she deserves it. I have half a mind to have kept us a squad you out of here and sent you to Reef City. Continuation. Fang and Reed both hiss at that. The fuck does that mean? You have five minutes to explain why I shouldn't do that right now. I couldn't have Trish's full response to the door, but she was obviously crying. After what she did? <laughs> Fang leaned in, trying to listen through the door that bitch was saying. Because of her arms, I pulled in closer, too. I hear the trollop... <laughs> the trollop whimpering and wanted nothing more to really make her cry. All of his fault. My fault? Anything to do with the purple pole smoker? Don't know what else I could do. Not fucking showing half the school the cringiest thing I've ever done and commit what amounts to character assassination. Some asshole from the sticks. I'm sure that cunt's some fucking sticks. Driving Fang away! What? What does Fang have to do with any of this? She wasn't bitching about every damn thing I do. I glance over to Fang, whose expression uh, seems to have gotten even worse now. 
looking at her this way makes me feel even shitter. Like, did I cause this? Fuck Trish, though. She's been a nice to me since the beginning. Anna, Anna, will you please step into my office? Spears' voice shook me from my eavesdropping. I was supposed to say to Trish. Fang tries to give me a reassuring smile, but it's so fragile. But this is all her fault. I'm not that backstabbing bitch. Reed gives me a silent thought. No thumbs up this time. Time to be a man. I enter Spears' office and my eyes immediately drawn to Trish sitting in front of the crump desk surrounded by crumpled up tissues. Damage has been done, man. He's up. Trish, is there anything you would like to tell Anon? I've never seen her like this. It's all your fault. Who are you to come in here and take Fang away? You're just some nobody from the middle of nowhere who only cares about himself. I helped pull Fang out of her shell. I made her a social pariah on the process. And my band was doing great! Before you came here! I set up the only successful show you've ever played. And then you show up and start manipulating everyone! Because you're a selfish control freak! Everything has to revolve around you. I'm the protagonist, how are you doing? Fang and Reed and me, we're gonna make it to the top! And you, but you stole everything from me because you didn't understand us. No one understands us. She just got off by a horrid sob, and had falling into her hands, a new tear spilling from her eyes. Wrapped to Jesus on his cross of a rock. That's a lot to unpack. Like he didn't even try to understand me either. Anom, is there anything you would like to add? Anom, is there anything you would like to add? Like she's not worth, like how she's not worth the oxygen? But if this really is all about Fang. Uh, <laughs> alright, alright, I'll play, I'll talk. I turn to the pitiable. Oh, you know what? We gotta see the bad option first, the one that I don't agree with. Oh, you see, they swap sometimes. Nope, I've got nothing. Spare size, like expected to add something more. What is it supposed to say? Yeah, I mean, if this is one of the choices that matter. Ha! <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that line reading. I hope it's in the other one. I turn to the pitiable purple punk rocker. Not the only person in this world. Maybe Reed was onto something. I think I finally get it. Look, Trish, maybe we didn't start off on the right. Yeah, I can be an asshole. She looks up at me, surprise written on her teary eyed face. I didn't mean to drive you and Fang apart or anything. I just want to be Fang's friend. And after what you fucking did, digging up my past, airing it to every senior? And all for Fang? She's outside of the doors thinking this is all her fault. That got a response from Trish. She dipped her head down and her fingers curled around the hem of her hoodie. Maybe it's all your fault for being such a bitch. Maybe it's mine. I don't know. But sure as shit isn't Fang's. Another choked sob raked her body and Steer started to flow anew. I imagine Spears prepared her for, like, not talking back and all that. I'm sorry for being a forefront to you, but after what you did, I don't know if I can forgive that. Spears nods in approval, a fondly grin stretching on his cheeks. Yeah! High five. That was well said, son. You've come a long way since your first day. You can leave and take the rest of the day off if you need it. I rise from my chair. I rise from my chair and make for the door. But I'm stopped by what Trish just muttered. It's my fault. I'm sorry. You should tell that to Fang. Right before I clamp my hand on the doorknob, Spear speaks off. Oh, and Anon, don't think I didn't notice. Uh-oh. I slowly turn back to him. Your waifu is trash, and your taste is shit. My door's always open so I can share some quality anime. What? I open the door to see Fang again, expression complex, leaning against the door's frame. Reed has taken my place beside her with a comforting arm around her shoulder. If this was any other situation, I might have felt a bit jealous. Hey. I have a sigh escaped my lips. 
You doing okay, bro? I'd frankly li like to just disappear right now. I think I'll just go home. Uh, I, I can ditch if you need me to come with. Fang looks at the door to Spear's room for a bit, then back at me. She should probably have to call up parents right now. Fang must have heard everything in the office. No, no, no. Trish has the right to say her thing. You worried about her too? Like, going home early is the easy option. And, like, Fang wants to see Trish too, right? Like, they're friends. They're allowed to say goodbye to her. You worried about her too? Fang turns her head down to her shoes. How could I not tell something like this was happening? You know it's not your fault. <sighs> Doesn't mean I don't feel guilty about it. She picks up her head and looks me in the eye. We should leave. You probably don't want to see her when she gets out. Actually, I think we should wait. Looks like you have something to say to her. Yeah, yeah, but... There's something else I wanted to tell her, too. Don't use any of the slurs and slang, my good sir. There is. You sure you should be talking to her while still this upset? It's nothing bad, I promise. That's a good call, dude. Hmm. You can go first. Thank you so small down the three of us slide down to the walls into sitting positions. The minutes pass. Wow, this is a hefty call. Actually, I kind of like the idea of just sitting there. There's something fun about it. What do I even say to her? I'm not entirely sure either. Reed awkwardly toys with his tail in silence. Suddenly a lot less contemplative than before. The class hands around my knees start to leave red marks on each other. I can't find the energy to shift them. I'll be honest, this game has made me feel like I wasted my life, and that's magical. Because normally I do that. <laughs> Eons later, Trish emerges from the office. Her tears have become shiny trails reflecting the sterile light of the hallway. Hesitantly, Fang gets up to speak to her. That makes one of us. Just the one of us. For a while, the two just stare at each other. Eventually. Why? Why the fuck did you do this to Anon? Did you actually think I'd be okay with this? Anon's just as much of my friend as you or Reed. That was something those douchebags who made a fun of our bands would do. I thought he was a pet influence. On you! On the band! Everything is changing, Fang, and I don't like it! All because of Anon! Then why didn't you just fucking talk to us? Anon isn't some asshole trying to rip everything apart. I know what you told me, Fang, but like, you deserve better and he's not... I catch Trish throwing a glance my way as she cuts herself off. Look, I'm sorry, Fang. I just tried to look out for you. Look out for me. I can make my own decisions, fit, Trish. Fang sighs and rubs her temples. I'm taking a break from the band. Ironic, since it's Trish who takes... Why are there so many, like, inversions here? Right? So in the game, in the game, uh, after the Battle of the Bands, Trish wants to take a hiatus because the world is ending and everything. And, like, so many of those things are inverted in this game. It's hilarious. I watch as Trish's entire world shatters before her eyes. Reed's lack of reaction tells me they discussed this while I was in the Spears' office. What? I need time to think. Fang, wait! Bye. Fang turns away from Trish and starts, walk and starts walking away. Don't! Like, double away doesn't really work. Careful with that. I'll wait by the exit while you talk, Anon. I don't know if Anon has anything to say after this. Like, what the fuck can you say? Reed gets up as she walks by and begins to follow, giving me a thumbs up. Giving you some privacy, amigo. Uh, and now it's just the two of us. Get up from my spot on the floor, pins and needles on my legs make it a moldy- Ah, you get that from a hard floor. Now what do you want? I fucked up too. That catches her off guard. I'm too mature for you, fool. This is my fault too, you know? Play a stupid game with this instead of manning up and just talking about it. I stone f the fuck up and finally admit it. To the world and to myself. I like Fang. I like her and I know that's what you're afraid of. I was never out to break anything up. I just like Fang. I want to help her. I never wanted to hurt anyone. Trisha's eyes glaze over and stare at something in the distance, as if all her worst fears have come true. I'm guessing the way they did today. Yeah. I'm done, Trish. I'm not going to fight with you over this. I won't fuck with you. You won't fuck with me. I'm going home. I turn away from Trisha. She buries her head in her hands again. Part of me wonders if you use this ad against me. But right now, it just feels good to get it out of my system. Oh, wow, we don't even let her get... Like, I'll be honest, 
unless there's more to it, like, I heard that Trish was supposed to be manipulative and stuff. I don't really feel it. It's It feels more like a desperation move than something that she was cold and clinically planning. As I begin looking for Fang, Reed stops me in the hallway. Made the right call talking to that. Trust me, dude. Reed shuffles his feet a bit and scratches his neck. That's all he ever does. I'm gonna give you a bit of space of dealing with that. Time to think things over, you know. He leans in and lowers his voice. You should tell them, bro. With a cryptic wink, he rushes off towards Trish, probably to give it the same kind of therapy. I throw a quick glance back to see him pull Trish in for a hug. He's told to deal with it now. What did he mean by tell them? Tell them what? Oh, yes! You know? How did he... So much for privacy. Yeah, he heard it. I shake the thoughts from my head and went in the direction Fang went. That can wait. I haven't even had dinner yet. It's like nine. It's like almost half. It's half. It's twenty thirty. It's eight thirty p.m. and all I've done is this because this is so good. Ah, I'm that little anim animation of the the steam the steam knight's little guy who goes ah, just the one. I catch up to Fang to the front of the school as I'm meant to prepare myself for what's coming. Time for the walk of shame. As I make my way through the hall, I do my best to ignore the passing jeers from teens I don't know. It's already spread to the lower years, too. Fucking light speed capable rumor wheel. Hey, do the Naruto run! Look at that behavior, Reed. How's your 2D girlfriend, Anon? Hey, Anon, need to borrow a jar? Your waifu is great, and I love her. Oh. <laughs> it's Stella there. Your waifu is great, and I love her. Not helping, Stella. I keep my head down, avoiding the looks from them all. Shouldering the door, I'm blinded by the morning sun's glare. Wow, this happened early. Ew. Within an hour, I've fallen back to square one. It's... is it too late to transfer to another school? Actually, like, you haven't fallen to square one. You still have the friends, right? Like, Naomi and Nasser still tolerate you. And Fang and all, like, they're still on your side. I don't think this will stop them. Especially not since you're a victim and, like, Nio and, 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 and Trish got slapped for it. Like, you still have Fang, which is way better than square one. Like, don't underestimate having one or two good friends. They can mean a lot more than nothing. Fang steps up the stairs, phone in hand. I can call us a taxi or something, Anon. I nod to that, moving for the stairs. Hey, loser, think fast! I turn towards the voice and the world slows down. My field of vision is filled with a soda can and I freeze up like a deer in the headlights. Just... We have to. I like how they call him the caveman. They have the fucking guts to talk back at him. Oh, so you get this one either way. That's cute. The can smacks me in the four walls mid stride, and I shift my footing to regain balance. Except my foot catches on the stair lip and slips. If I would ever do an audiobook or voice acting, I would be so happy. Especially if it's something with a little bit of love. I don't care how small the role is. I don't care. Let me have it. I'll pull my blue yeti from the. S I'll pull my blue yeti down. I'll put a. I'll put a fucking tarp over my head to make the sound go away. I'll make it work. I've got the passion for fashion. My character either better be very fashionable or we're going with Phineas sounds a little goofy. Not clown, just a little, a little Nasser, a little out there. So, and the new thing I'm doing, like Nasser, I want to stick him around. He's kind of developed. And I kind of, I kind of got a funny version of him. It's still developing. It's still going places. I'm letting these ideas simmer, but one is solidified. So clearly this does stop at some point. At some point, the ideas stop or become more con concrete. Like in the other one, I've kind of mixed in the theory of everything, and it was funny. It's just funny to think about, like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and the main character doesn't care. It's a good way to end things, especially after everything else. I was like, I've been talking to myself. I've been talking to these stupid mental representations of my psyche, and you're some genetic super code that tells me that I'm a deific being because of the theory of everything implanted into my new spheric self? What the fuck are you on, dude? I'm trying to stop an asteroid, you dumb fuck. This isn't helping. Uh... Oh fuck, we got a split before the caveman gets here! Hang on! My lungs feel like they're on fire. I think my feet touch the back of my head. Peel myself from around the bullet, feeling every bone in my body creep painfully. I love that blur. Oh fuck! Holy shit, you're alive! 
I am? Wow. Nothing seems to be broken. I've been in worse. Honestly, my ego is still more injured than I am. Can you walk? Yeah, sure, sure. There's nothing, there's nothing compared to the view there back at my old school. Try taking a step and my knee involuntarily twists in the direction it's not supposed to. <gasps> Fuck. Suddenly, I'm doing the Seth MacFarlane pose again. No, that's the Peter pose. Peter does that pose, not Seth. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me help you up. Oh, man, I love his sad little face. Look at this sad little Anon. I love that Fang is like, uh, I gotta make do with this, aren't I? <laughs> Tucks her arms around my shoulder, pulls me back on my feet again. Just... let's just get to the bench over there. The taxi will be in like five minutes. Feels like Fang has a second foot. I eventually make it to the bench. I still can't bend either leg, so I just sort of splay against the sidewalk. Fang sits on the other end and starts digging through her pockets. Uh... I think I heard somewhere that nicotine helps relieve some of the pain. Yeah, I could use a smoke right about now. Fang receives one of her cigarettes from a crumpled pack and sparks at the life of the pink lighter. She takes the first roll, then hands it to me. I know slowly, I'm just aching as my lungs fill with a wonderful, numbing nicotine. A minty taste and cool sensation. Settling over my skin does help relax my painfully tense muscles. Before I know it, the cigarette in my fingers is nothing but a smoldering filter. Looks like our ride is here. A grim beater of a taxi pulls up with a curve, driven by an equally grimy velociraptor. Clearly one of the three left operating in the city. Fang helps me on my feet and over to the cab. Opening the door so I can shamble in like a zombie. Ah! It's the devil! Okay, listen. When the fuck did, did Kane from Bloodlines get in this? What is Vampire the Masquerade's Kane doing in this, and why is he driving my car? I'm not a vampire, sir. Please leave. Ah, shit, kid. You look like you got into a fight with a steamroller and lost! Uh, no way is your kids heading on a school day. Maybe the hospital? Oh. Should think kid got the address? 237 South Hammond Street. Oh! The, in, I want to be the, I want to hug the gator! It's called St. Hammond School, that's the reference! I was wondering what it was referencing. It might be a double reference, like they referenced it twice, but hey! Uh, the driver sucks a breath through his teeth. Skin around, eh? I can take you as far as the edge of the neighborhood, deal? Yeah, whatever. Just take me home. The gap speeds off the direction from the school. I still can't believe Trish would do something like that. The gap driver lets out a laugh. You got your ass out of there, my girl, didn't you? I don't bother responding with <laughs> while Fang kicks the back of his seat. Yeah, yeah, didn't want to tip much anyway. Why doesn't the driver drive all the way to your place? It can't be that bad, right? Uh, that reminds me. Hold this for me. I toss my pocket knife into Fang's lap. She looks at me with a nervous smile like she expects a punchline. Oh. Joking, kinda. Never needed to shift someone yet. Well, pulling it out is what helps. Talking hurts, and you're a victim. Like, people are gonna come for you. If they get the chance and they smell the blood. Each breath I take feels like my ribs are gonna shatter. Fang must have noticed and she kept silent after that. Alrighty, end of the line. That'll be 15 bucks even. There's still a few blocks we've gotta walk. I manage to leap out of the car and Fang drops a few crumpled pills on his seat and slams the door shut behind her. The car peels out and disappears around a corner. Well, no place to go but home. Wait, you still can't walk right. I could probably make it a good 50 yards. Hang on, give me a shoulder. No, don't worry about- Oh, ignoring my protest, Fang rams all around my back for support. Where am I going? First turn is right up there. Wait, Fang's coming over to my place? Fang is coming over to my place? Fang is coming over to my place? I don't want her to see how I live. Crap, did at least a turn you on. Why would you leave that on when you went to school? This is worse than Reed suggesting you watch pornos at school. Somehow. Hang on, let me get my key. I will fish around for my pocket, hands weighed down by some cheap first aid stuff from the nearby liquor store. This stuff wasn't necessary. Shut up. Open the door. I finally managed to find my key and wedge it between my leg and wallet. Oh, found it wedged between my leg and wallet. Fang takes the key and opens the door before I can take throw it out the dirt. <laughs> I wanted not to see it. Well, no turning back now. Welcome to Casadel Shithole, occupancy of a miserable weeb. You know, it's not that bad. It's not that bad, actually. Like, I know it doesn't look like much, but it's it's got a certain charm to it, you know? All things considered, 
I like how he has a cross on the wall. Oh, Raptor Jesus threw you a bone because you hung up your cross, boy. God doesn't help those who those help themselves to hang up the cross at the least. There's no dirty dishes stacked at the sink. I just want to see this before we leave. Man, this is just cute. Man, this game is great. Fuck is all I've got to say. More recording later, after my throat has had like a whole fucking week to heal this fucking hell. Oh, it's killing me. But it's great. It's worth it. If the developers are watching this for some god-awful reason, know that I'm killing my throat for this. Murder on the dance floor. It's garbage. I know. Have your laughs. Have your little shit post. Go ahead. Treat yourself. It's my treat. You get it for free. I won't block it. I won't remove it. You can just put it all down there. Laugh it up. Ham at me. You did something great. You deserve it. You deserve it.